everyone, and welcome back to Bobble Pod. This is our latest Mr. Bobble News Roundup, episode 21. Um, this is where in the episode where I always talk about what's hot and not, a few questions that come in, I give my feedback, um, talk about some the stuff that are trending and what's going on. Ironically, a lot of that's trending I talk about now, but the podcast doesn't come out for a couple of weeks after I do that, but that's just editing time. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the resources of all the latest podcast stuff where we can... I'd love to record this weekly but and have it out weekly, um, but we just don't have the time or resources to do it. We have to do it a little in bulk, so it's harder to plan. So one of the things we will try and work on is make sure it's more fresher on the spot. Um, but we're working with that, aren't we, Callum? Aren't we? We're trying oh, to work in, on that. Indeed, indeed. So, yeah, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe on YouTube, click on the bell notification so when the next episodes come out, and that way you can see this pretty face whilst you're listening to the audio. I've had a few people say my Yorkshire accent's not too bad. And then it's soothing. My sister said it put her to sleep. And I don't know if that was the content that was boring that put her to sleep or whether it was my voice. So if you need a bedtime story, listen to my podcast is what I'm saying. So, yes. So, Bobble News Roundup, hashtag Mr. Bobble. Always use that hashtag if you want to comment. Even if you want to abuse me or say something outlandish, I'll always comment on it. And I'll say something. Um, some, some new channels coming out around by Mr. Bobble, which we'll update you on. But as I'm recording this, we have a new prime minister. So that's the first bit of news. Liz Truss, apparently in Liz we trust, I don't. Um, I didn't trust Rishi Sunak as well, either on the other side. Um, what I do like the idea of what I liked in the news is Peter Jones potentially being prime minister. And I was like, finally our saviour. Peter Jones, if you don't know who Peter Jones, is Dragon and Dragon's Den, very, very successful businessman. Um, was at an event, I can't remember where, but he was on This Morning where they were talking about it with Philip Schofield and I forget, who's the other person? Uh, Holly Willoughby. Holly Willoughby. I can't, what was it? Was it Holly? Uh, Holly Willoughby. Yeah, Holly. I'm not going to say last name, can't get right. So, yeah, and he talked about it and now he's being serious about it and apparently he said his missus said he, he should uh, really consider it. I think he should because I would vote for someone like Peter Jones. Very level-headed, calm, composed, won't take BS, can call BS out for what it is, never going to lie, understands what businesses need, and treats his employees extremely well. Um, he did say that he thought running the country would be easy and he comes back and says it's not going to be easy, it's going to be difficult. But he could build an actual team around him where people aren't just promoted because of the job they've done in the past or who they've sucked up to, basically, or who was asked they've kissed to get to the top. It's on merit and ability to do work because that's what Pete, how that's how Peter Jones works. That's how I work. You don't get to work for Bobble just because you know me, your friend. The amount of people that come up to me in the industry that I've worked with said, I'll give them a job now that you're an agency. I'm like, no. Why? I want people that are committed to the brand, people that are experienced and are experts in their individual fields. I work with suppliers as such. I work with Callum because he's one of the best, if not the best producer in Leeds, in my opinion. Oh, thank you very much. Welcome. Ta. Um, and I work with Josh because he's cheap. He's not that good, but he's cheap. <laughs> he's laughing. That's harsh. Josh is actually one of my uh, close friends. Actually, me and Josh worked together at Into Marketing, and uh, we've always stayed in touch then. But now I actually would cast Josh as like one of my closest friends. I even, I'm even embedding into his friendship circle somehow. Um, I don't know how that's happened. Um, but yeah, Josh is, uh, he's, he's part of Bobble as much as I am. So, but if you actually need some good quality video, just look at our podcast and some of the videos we've done. Josh has done all that and he's done a lot for our clients. But that's the idea. You get the pe- right people around you that are skilled and experts at what their job and complement everything else. And the government we've got right now, let's be honest with you, it's, it's just a bunch of like, talking about different people doing, I'm like, sorry, but what's your experience in doing these roles? Do you know what I mean? So like, you know, a head of education should be someone who has been in the education system, a head teacher, maybe at a board level for years in coming in. You know, someone in the NHS should be someone who's run a hospital, or ex-doctor, for example. You know what I mean? Actually knows what they're talking about and understands it. But they don't. They put in people that are just yes people. And I think someone like Peter Jones could come in and actually do a good service to this country and get us back on track. And that is what I call about competent leader. That When you think of a competent leader, someone like that, you know, someone like Peter Jones could do it. And it's not because he's male or anything like that. You know, there's a couple of ex, I'd say, Dragon's Den candidates that could do it. Even um, 
you know, I forget her name who is on The Apprentice, but she's one of the right, she's one of the people that goes around, ran Portsmouth Football Club for a while. Um, Karen? Oh, um, I, I can't remember. Is it Karen? Her name's Karen, isn't it? I think it is. I think it is. Apologies if I got it wrong. Someone hockey can tap it in. But pretty sure was it Portsmouth Football Club? Um, female absolute. Oh killer. no, no! Is it West Ham? Karen Brady. Is it Karen? Was it, was it West Ham? I always thought it was Portsmouth. No, I think it, if if I'm, I might be thinking of the wrong person as well here in this situation. Yeah, Josh, we might need your help in a minute. Um, Just Google it. But. I'm pretty sure. I've got a laptop in front of me. I should Google it myself. <laughs> I want to present to the camera. <laughs> Just Google it, please. I think if my if my memory serves me right, I'm pretty sure you're thinking of Karen Brady. Who yes, is. it's Karen Brady. But I think that's because she's on The Apprentice. Yes, she goes around. Yes, and and, I, and and I think she was like chief executive or was very high up at West Ham. I don't think she was at Portsmouth. Let's have a look. So Karen Brady is a member of the House of Lords and uh, and is the what was the former managing director of Birmingham City Football Club <laughs> and is the current vice chairman of West Ham United. Right, I got, there we I got, go. I got Portsmouth mixed up with Birmingham. Sorry, football fans, don't slaughter me. <laughs> um, it was the blue. I just remember the blue club and I thought it was Portsmouth, but it's Birmingham, isn't it? So you talk about Peter Jones, but is a country essentially not a business and could you run a country like a business? You should run everything like a business. My local temple, right, uh, Sikh temple in, in Chapel Island, um, needs to be run like, even though it's, it's funded by donations and charity and, and funding, it has bills. It has gas bills, electric bills. It has to provide, we offer a free, obviously, kitchen for uh, people to come. You have to run like a business. We charge people to do certain services and sermons, uh, which goes towards the funds of the property to maintain the building, to allow a, a, a development, to allow us to do more educational stuff, to hold summer camps and take people on trips and look after the elderly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It has to be run like a business. You have to think of profit because money has to come in for you to sustain it. It doesn't money doesn't grow on trees. And same with the country. If you look at someone like Peter Jones, where does the money come from? It comes from the Bank of England, it comes from borrowing, and it's not really that good. We talked earlier in a previous podcast that how we're gonna lend energy companies money so the taxpayer can pay it off. Where's the logic in that? If he can come in and make things more self-sufficient, like stuff like the NH NHS, make it more self-sufficient. An example being when I talk about, you know, the NHS, NHS pre-prescription paid cards, they won't change that because you can get, if you've had a condition and you've had surgery, or trying to, like I've had a kidney transplant, so I have to have steroids and immunosuppressants for life. That's medication for life and it's not cheap medication. So I get that on the NHS. But if I ever get a cold and I need antibiotics, I should pay for it and I do pay for it. I could get it from my exemption card, but I don't. And that's the difference. To change the system where your card only allows you to have certain medications related to certain ailments, they won't change that because apparently it costs too much to change it. I might as well leave it as it is. This is the mentality that needs to be changed. This is why, you know, we're having to pay more tax because we can find efficiencies, simple, effective efficiencies. Stuff like when stuff like the HS2 gets out of control in terms of price, 100 billion, but then you're letting the house of the cost of energy go up. It's just so hypocritical. I'm going to stop you there, Manny, because, and Josh made a very good point earlier as well, which is that you could technically get Peter Jones to work in government in a, in a role. So there's a thing called technocracies, yeah. right? So technocrats. And these are people where you, you form a government in which the decision makers or makers are selected on the basis of their expertise yeah. in, in a given area of responsibility. So particularly with regard to scientific or technical knowledge. So you could, in theory, form a government and, um, you know, invite Peter Jones or Deborah Meaden, who's one of my favourite dragons. I love Deborah. Yeah, I, she's I, great. I love her as well. And you know, invite them to come and work in the government as a business advisor or, you know, I don't know so much if they could be the head of the, you know, head of business. Yeah, but, but isn't that what the cabinet's for? Well, you could, in theory, put them in the cabinet. 
Yeah, but then I think you need someone who's strong and possesses someone that's going to give you encouragement that actually I'm happy that person's running this country. It gives me, it allows me to sleep comfortably at night that knowing that this person's level headed and will make smart decisions. Might not always make the right decisions because no one's perfect. Oh, no. But you can sleep better at night. And I haven't been able to sleep properly at night knowing who's running this country. And I just ignored the news. But anyway, news, what does it mean? I want, I've, I've digressed in the Peter Jones element. Um, but I'd love to see, I'd love to see someone like him run the country. You know what I mean? I think it'd be great. Um, but I think that's what this country needs. It needs someone to step out of something like that and come in and say, you know what? This is a mess. I need to clear this up. Because what's next, Nigel Farage? Honestly, I feel like that's where we're going to. It's like almost like after Boris Johnson, anyone could be prime minister. So that He set the benchmark that low so that honestly anyone now is kind of better than Boris Johnson. It's like, honestly, shocking. So do you want to start a political party or a... Uh, I don't know. So, uh, you know what? <laughs> I, I read this. Yorkshire is the biggest county. It has the most MPs from any county in all of the United Kingdom. So if Yorkshire had an actual its own political party, which every county in Yorkshire, every little subset MP was part of that. Think of SMP, for example, and they had a Yorkshire version of it. There would never, ever be a majority government ever because they would never have enough seats because most seats would come from Yorkshire as a county. And that would put the north on the map because the north gets neglected a lot. The more you know. There you, I didn't yeah. know that. There you go. So if Yorkshire actually came together and had selected its own MPs, had a political party, had someone to lead it, and every party, like what happened in Scotland where the SNP took over and now they have a significant majority and won't go back because they got sick and tired of the South and all Labour and Tories, there would never, ever be a majority government. They would always have to be in coalition with the Yorkshire party because they would never be able to conjure up enough seats now actually mathematically they could but it would mean all the other areas would have to be for blue yellow or red if that makes sense but that's never going to happen let's be real but anyway digress in terms of news roundup but there's there's some interesting elements for you i think it's like 100 seats or something 100 plus seats oh, there, you go. Counts for. there you go mm. that's a significant amount um I got asked a specific question. So news, what does actually lose trust mean? Nothing. If you're a business, keep doing what you're doing. Keep taking advice from your business um, executives, you're not executive directors. Keep investing into your marketing. Keep building your brand. And you're going to have to see out the tough times because I'll be honest with you, the government's not going to do much. In my opinion, I don't think the government's going to be able to do much. And I don't think Liz Truss is our saviour in any way, shape, or form. I don't think anyone who came in, whether it was Rishi Snack or her, was going to save us. And do the best you can to look after your employees at this time. That is my advice. Um, the biggest question I got asked, which I'm going to cover quickly, is what is dying in the world of marketing or digital marketing? Like what's kind of dead, essentially, or dying or should be dead? Um, the first one that always comes to me is image-based content. There's a lot of companies still go out there and they still run ads or Facebook ads and they use images and they're not using video. And images are dead. Stop using images to promote your brand on social media and other platforms. It doesn't work. You're wasting money and you can get better value from running better quality creative. Focus on video. The other one is long form videos. We used to watch a lot of long form videos. Videos and ads used to be long. Five seconds, seven seconds at most. YouTube pre-roll, five seconds you can skip. Those that are not skippable, max go up to around about. You get annoyed when they're 15 seconds non-skippable these days. Everyone's not in ad, you do, let's be real. When an ad on YouTube is non-skippable and goes on 30 seconds, you're thinking, I mimed OM, OMFG there for those listening on audio. I was like, you just kind of like, no, just get me to the content. But the content you're watching is like 15, 20 minutes, something like what Mr. Beast does in terms of the video. And that's it because you want to you want to consume more content because we want more content. But you can't have more content and each content be an hour long. 
which is why we changed our format from our episodes down to 15, 20, max 25 minutes. Some episodes are 15, 16 minutes, it varies, but the minimum we'll do is 15 minutes, the maximum we will do is 25 minutes. We have a range. As I'm just reminding that we've recorded 15 minutes of this episode so far. So yeah, long form video is just out there. It only plays a use or an element when you're on uh if it's on website and people consuming that or you've built a big following from that um short form written content if you look at the stats of what's going on with seo short form written content is pretty much dead you want to have more oomph and emphasis around the content you're writing go for a thousand words plus basically we talked about in the last episode what is next for seo uh passage indexing and having contents in there which allows you to jump from different elements which keeps people on site longer improves your ranking factor for that particular keyword and keeps people on site for longer which means they're more likely to convert um and then someone asked me well we'll not just talk about digital talk about things physical media is slowly dying um talking about print I know a few people that are in print that do like mail shots, but they do very creative mail shots. So like, I know someone who did a campaign where they were sending horses heads, you know, that you can put on, not real horses heads, but if anyone knows a godfather, that scene where he's going to make him an offer he can't refuse. And it was a horse's head that you could wear. And it said, let me make you an offer you can't refuse. Let me have 10, 15 minutes of your time and book a meeting in. Genius, Matt. There's always a place for a platform if... Or, a, a digital or a marketing channel or not digital channel if you're creative with it very very creative with it in terms of how you approach it um so i think physical media is like dying like mail shots all this is all dying um unless you're kind of localized um i think you don't see as much of it anymore or unless you know your audience and you're very creative about it tv is moving to streaming start seeing like youtube is you know, make so much more money from its ads revenue because of the amount of streaming platforms that people have on there. Netflix will eventually introduce this. Disney might even do collaborations and branding with the platform, not just the money they make from subscriptions because the costs of producing high quality content will go up and they need other streams of revenue to to support that. Now, if Netflix did a free version but had ads in, I'd use it. If Netflix introduced at a paid level where you wouldn't get in ads but you would get um ads at the beginning maybe one or two or one premium ad for that show sponsor i'd, I'd be happy with that because it gets me ready to sit down and gets, lets me put my uh, get my drink in, in my hand my popcorn ready for whatever film and what i'm watching i don't mind that if you are on sky and this happens now if you go on sky and demand you watch something on sky movies you get ads before the sky film plays and that you pay eighty pound whatever a month for Sky. So if you say Netflix shouldn't do that, that's your, your argument's flawed because we pay so much for Sky movies, yet they put ads in. If you watch House of Dragon, the new episode of Game of Thrones, and you watch that on demand, there's ads, and in between there's ads. But the thing is, you can fast forward them and you can skip them. Does that make sense? So there's a, there's a place for ads in streaming platforms, um, and it will start happen more sooner than later because even though TV revenue is down, I believe, but I think more will happen with streaming platforms in terms of what's going down. So slightly better. And finally, display graphics. That's the last one, like I say, is dead. If you're doing display graphics that are just like GIFs, what are you doing? Why are you even wasting the money? They need to be at least HTML5 or video-based, you know, display ads. I talked about this in my Performance Max Um episode a few episodes ago um display graphics are pretty much dead stop using image and gifs move towards video and html5 the better quality image you have the more it's going to stand out on different platforms different devices and you're going to do better so they're, they're the only couple of updates i have at this stage there's a lot happening which i'll update in the next one um but you know there's a lot of things dying move away from them focus on what's working what's not working um don't forget to you know give in your questions so we can pick up on the next news roundup like this one send them to at bubble digital don't forget to use the hashtag mr bubble or hashtag ask bubble um, and i look forward to catching you up on the next uh, episode where we will be featuring a few guests on some key topics like social media and content writing coming up which i'm very excited to have part of the series thank you for listening don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next week 